Hello people. So we're obviously going to take you through my morning routine. So as you can see, the Lumi alarm clock wakes me up at five in the morning, roll out of bed, obviously got a flex first thing in the morning. No, I don't usually do that. Right, and then jump on the scales, weigh myself every single morning and track it in an app called Happy Scale. Jump in the shower, essential before bed and in the morning. Trim up the beard, make myself look pretty. Brush my teeth, which I didn't record there. Clean the bed, tidy the bed. You gotta start the day right, people. If you don't have a tidy bed, you don't have a tidy mind. Let me start getting changed, of course. Get ready for the day. Wipe the fresh garments on. The perfume of choice. Boss in motion, highly recommended, very summery. Slap on some jewelry. Then we head over for the morning health supplements. So you can see that I've got this concoction of powders that all get slammed into a glass and downed along with some different pills. Mill one, we're going with protein French bagels. Not French toast, bagels. One sesame, one cinnamon. This meal is becoming a staple for me. It's very nice. I've got a bit of a sweet tooth, so this meal hits a spot. It's very easy to make as well. You basically get your ingredients, bend them up. So you've got egg whites, one egg, scoop away. I put some cinnamon in there as well and some salt, blend it all up, put it into a bowl, dip the bagels in and then chuck the bagels on a pan and then they fry, a slice of banana on top, some honey. Oh, gorgeous. All right, step one, 50 grams egg whites into the blender. 30 grams away, I'm going with the sweet and salty popcorn flavor. This one sounds weird, but it works. Dash of cinnamon and salt. So once you've got that mixture into a bowl like this, I'm curious, what bagels are your favorite? For me, it's gotta be the New York ones, but I don't have a Tesco's or a big supermarket next to me, so we're going with the budget little ones. Sesame, which they've got a new, and the cinnamon raisins, but it's gotta be New York. If you, if you had to buy any, New York. So let me know what your favorites are in the comments. Once the pan is piping hot, drizzle of oil. Now a little trick here, obviously I don't want to use that much oil. So I'm going to grab a tissue, fold it up so it's like that, and literally just move the oil around the pan. So it's basically like just the top coat. So I'll still grease the pan, but used barely any. And doing that is so much better than using that shitty one cow spray, because one cow spray firstly, ruins your pans, and secondly, it's just not that good, as in the ingredients aren't that healthy for you, whereas this, it's an unsaturated fat, it's much healthier, so best option. Right, so as you can see, don't know if you can see that, the bagel's kind of sitting in all the juices. Wash it on there. Look at that, beautiful. Also, another little trick, firstly, Not bad. So I want to put honey on this now. What I used to do is put the plate on the scales and then drizzle the honey on. But what you can do is put the honey on the scales, set it to zero, use whatever honey you want, then put it back on the scales and it says minus 29, which means I've used about 30 grams, which is pretty spot on for what I want. So, I mean, just look at that. Sam, if you're watching this, I'm sorry mate. At least it's not got Nutella on it. Mm. This is better with bagels, I'm sorry. It is. If you've tried French toast before, try it with bagels instead, I promise you, way better. And the final part of the morning routine, I'll usually sit down for 20 to 30 minutes and just read a book. At the moment, I'm reading David Goggins' book, You Can't Hurt Me, highly recommended, but doing just something to stimulate your brain before you go into work, I've found really, really positive. Hello, boys and girls. How are we all doing? So welcome back to the YouTube. Today's video, we're going over just generally a day in the life, mainly talking about my morning routine, which you would have already seen. The reason I wanted to do this is because for me, having a good routine in place around my morning and before bed is crucial. And this is something that I always stress to my clients as well. Um, making sure that when you wake up first thing in the morning, you're trying to be productive and you're not you know, waking up and just going straight on your fucking phone. 
it's not a good way to start your day. So I always make sure to keep my mornings stress-free. So I don't actually check my phone up until, well, I wake up at 5 a.m. I probably first check it at about 6.30, 7-ish, uh, when I start replying to clients, uh, replying to other messages. And you know, I don't ever then go on social media and start browsing because again, you know, you're just giving your brain those negative stresses that you don't need. And it's just a distraction. It's pointless fucking scrolling that you don't need. And we're all guilty of it. Even to this day, even though I say that, sometimes I catch myself pointlessly scrolling on social media. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Stop wasting your damn time, you prick. Uh, so yeah, morning routine, key. And then bedtime routine. Obviously sleep is vital for recovery, energy levels, your ability to build muscle, burn fat, all of these things often revolve around how much sleep you get. And if I talk to someone in person or online and they're like, I'm struggling to lose weight, one of the first questions I'll ask them is, how, much, how long do you get in bed? What's your sleep and weight schedule? As in, are you going to bed and waking up at around the same time? Often they'll then tell me that they're only getting like five hours of sleep. I'm like, right, there you go. Sort your fucking sleep out and I guarantee things will start moving in the right direction. So that just goes to show how important sleep is. And that's why I try to get at least eight hours more if I can. So I make sure that I'm winding down, going to bed, like trying to get in bed and my eyes are closed on the pillow at about half eight. So then I'm out by nine o'clock latest which gives me then eight hours because I wake up at five. The rest of this video is just gonna be um, a bit of a day in the life following me around. I've got an upper body session later on, so I'll get some clips for that. And that's about it really, just some general waffle. Some meals probably will get thrown in there. We'll see where it takes us, it's just going with the flow. Hope you enjoy it. In for an upper body session, no, I'm not gonna lie. Kind of shit, so gonna have to get some steps in. Go drop the kids off and then get started. But I didn't eat too long ago, so definitely need to get some steps in beforehand. That's a good tip, actually. If you um, eat quite close to training, you know, that food's just sitting in your stomach. You haven't really digested it properly, so you're not going to be using the nutrients effectively for your workout. So if you do have to eat quickly and then train, try to get in like a five, 10 minute walk or like on a Stairmaster or elliptical bike just to get the body and the uh, midsection moving around to help aid digestion. At the end of the day, if you can do that, you can actually digest the food and then use the food for performance in the gym. Pro tip for you. But yeah, like I said, upper body session. I'm actually really enjoying this session. This will be the third time I'm doing it. So aim to progress everything. Hopefully nothing flares up because I've got a lot of injuries at the moment that are fucking bugging me. And uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on. So first movement up on the upper body session, we've got a upper chest or clavicular fly. You can see the first thing I'm doing here is finding my active range. So that's the point I'm aiming to come down to at the bottom of every rep. I don't want to be exceeding that because I'm potentially offloading some of that weight onto um, other joints and uh, connective tissue, which we don't want. So you can see that after I found my active range, I'm coming down to that same point every single time. You can see that I've set the bench up on a nice high incline and then trying to drive my elbow across the midline so it's lining up with my upper pec fibers. Now, this is gonna be a fantastic movement to challenge that upper pec, so definitely recommended. Next up, we've got the Nautilus chest press. This probably is one of, if not the best chest press in the world, in my opinion. It converges really, really nicely, which means that it starts wide and comes up to a narrow position at the top. You can see that my elbow path is slightly down, so I'm not flaring my elbows out at 90 degree angle to the body. Here you can see that I'm uh, using some elbow, uh, some wrist strap, sorry. Now, what I want to think about doing here is pinching my shoulder blades together and keeping them in that fixed position. Almost imagine you've got a pen between your shoulder blades and you're trying to keep it fixed in place throughout the entire set. You can see as I'm coming down to the bottom position, I'm taking a breath in, bracing hard, and then pressing up all the way to the top, thinking about driving my elbow across the midline. You can see that I've got nice, slow eccentrics here and I'm really thinking about initiating the movement with my pecs, no other muscle. Now moving on to the single arm cuffed side lateral raise. So you can see that I've set the height of the cable. So the challenge is coming as I'm in that bottom position and then it drops off nicely at the top. You can see that the, pull, the cable is pulling my arm across me. So it's almost stretching that side del, which is what I want in this position. And I'm really rinsing that portion of the lift by allowing my arm to travel across me and also pausing in that lengthened position. 
Then I'm thinking about just moving my hand out to the side as far as I can. I'm not moving the weight up. I don't want to be involved in too much trap here. I'm thinking about moving the weight out to the side. Another thing to consider here is where your upper arm is. So you don't want it coming directly out to the side. You want it slightly in front of your torso. Now we come on to a seated lat row. You can see that this machine can also be done as an upper back row, but we're choosing to opt for the lat version. So we're going with a narrow grip, neutral grip, palms facing each other. You can see that I'm trying to keep my elbows as close into my torso as I can, driving down towards the base of my spine. Almost imagining that as I'm coming down, I'm thinking about wrapping my elbows around my spine to really get a good contraction on the lats here. You can see as well that my elbows don't ever come past my spine. As soon as I start coming past my spine, the upper back's gonna be taken over and that's not the goal with this movement. Next up, we've got the D-handle upper back pull down. Now, this is one of my favorite pull downs for the upper back. You can see that I'm using the D-handles here to allow for a bit more freedom of movement at the wrist and elbow joint. Semi pronated grip here. Again, thinking about driving my elbows down, but this time past my torso, flaring them out a lot more because we're trying to bias the upper back here. You can see that I've positioned the D-handles so that my hand is basically following my elbow path. In fairness, I could probably have them maybe one wider, but that's the general gist. Next up, we move on to the arm work. So firstly, we've got this crossbody tricep extension. This is probably my favorite tricep isolation. You can see that the cables run either side, and I'm thinking about bringing my elbows almost behind my torso, keeping them in a fixed position, extending all the way back, getting a good stretch on the triceps at the top. Uh, and yeah, if you haven't tried this one, definitely give it a try. It's one of my favorites and you get a fantastic contraction on the triceps. And then finally, we've got a rope hammer curl. Now, if you want some meaty forearms, you're gonna need to include this in your program, definitely. So the goal of this is to try and keep your elbow relatively still, a little bit of forward movement is fine. But um, even with a rope or with dumbbells is gonna be fantastic. The challenge needs to come in that top position. So you can see with this movement, it gets harder as I come up, uh, mainly in the mid range, in the end range, it drops off a tiny bit, but I'm pausing to really make the most of that hard position. So hopefully this voiceover helps guys. If you've got any questions, as always, you can either DM me on Instagram or drop a comment down below. Now it would be rude not to finish up with a little physique update, wouldn't it? So here we are sitting at about 95 kilos the morning this was taken, that's what I weighed in at. You can see that obviously I'm a little bit tubby, but this is what you've got to push through guys. If you want to build any decent amount of size, you need to get comfortable gaining a little bit of body fat because when you diet down next time, you're gonna be a lot more muscled. And that is ultimately the goal. So don't be scared to push your body weight up. Don't be scared to push your body fat up. Spend a lot of time in the surplus. And that's how you're gonna gain some serious slabs of tissue. Now, if you want someone to hold you accountable and guide you through the process of building muscle tissue, you can message me on Instagram. We can have a chat about how I can help you achieve your goals. Hello, me again. So it's the not next day, day after, it's Friday today. I recorded that video on Wednesday. As you can see, I'm a little bit less hairy because I've just had a haircut, believe it or not. But yeah, that kind of wraps up the video. So just wanted to kind of show you what my morning routine is, how I set myself up for the day. To me, the morning is probably the most important period of the day, apart from training, of course. But the morning sets you up for the rest of the day. If you have a shit morning routine, you don't start the day well, then it often has a knock on impact on the rest of the day. So. Make sure you're doing something positive and productive in your mornings. Main thing is don't go on your fucking phone and browse social media as soon as you wake up because the chances are you're probably going to see something you don't like. Maybe a message, maybe an upsetting video, an email from work, your twat boss, whatever it fucking is. It might upset you and then you kind of think about that throughout the whole morning and it can impact your mood for the rest of the day. So if you want any advice, because I used to do this by the way, and it did affect my morning um, up until quite late. So if you wanna take away anything from this video, try to avoid going on your phone for, for the first hour and a half to two hours of the day, if you can. If you need to check it for work or whatever, then fine. But other than that, just try for a couple of weeks. Don't go on your phone for a while in the morning. Obviously, you would have seen the upper body session as well. Um, the voiceover talking about different cues for different movements. So hopefully you help that. that, that, that so hopefully that helped as well. And as always, if you've got any questions, let me know. I will leave the workout here again.
Yeah, it's a demanding session. I said that last time. That all of the sessions on this new plan are fucking demanding, and that's how it should be. I had a comment on um, a YouTube video that I did, and the guy was like, don't train like this, it's too demanding, uh, too tiring. And I was like, well, yeah, that's how training's supposed to be. Do you want to grow or not? It's not meant to be easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Training is meant to be hard. You're meant to leave those sessions feeling like you've been hit by a bus. So give it a try if you think you're hard enough. Hopefully enjoy the video. I've got to come up with some more ideas because I'm struggling at this point. So uh, if there's anything you guys want to see, drop them in the comments down below. And I will catch you in the next one. See ya.